Welcome back to another episode of Triad Expeditions. Uh, in this video, we are going to be talking about our specific DC to DC charger installation on our Nissan Armada and Airstream 23 foot uh, twin bunk, forward bunk uh, Airstream. So uh, both of these are 2022 vehicles. Um, and I will discuss the reason why we did this in other sections of the video. Um, I am going to apologize right up front. There, this is not an install video whatsoever. This is basically just giving you some ideas and reasons why we decided to do this on our Airstream. Um, kind of also share with our viewers the reason that you want to do this to give you another power source going down the road at night when your solar panels aren't working. Uh, because you still need to power that 12 volt fridge that you have running and your batteries can get low by the time you get to your destination, especially if you're traveling overnight uh, for 12 hours. Um, so I do hit on that as well. And once again, if you're looking for an installation video, this is not an installation video. What we're gonna cover in this is basically, I'm gonna show you where we hook the vehicle up um, where the lines run out the back of the vehicle and more importantly how they run up into the Airstream and where we located the DC to DC charger so that is going to be the extent of the video uh, a lot of these videos where I don't show walk people step by step on how to do something I end up getting a few dislikes in the process um, that's okay I don't mind that I understand but just want to give you that warning um, that this is not a install video whatsoever. It's just a configuration video and how we did it. So, all right, well, on with the show then. So one of the reasons uh, that I'm uh, filming this today is is uh, just because it's a nice rainy day here in Ohio. And uh, so we're in our new barn that houses the Airstream and the FJ Cruiser. Let me slow the camera down here a little bit so you're not getting dizzy. And, uh, but yeah, we've been wanting this barn for a very long time and was able to finally make it happen. So, all right, we're gonna move on to the connection here underneath the hood. Um, this, was, this was a little bit, I don't know, I wasn't completely happy with it. Um, what you see here uh, in front of you with, with this connection here, this is actually the Victron um, charger that goes to the wall and I can put the hood down and uh, keep the hood down normally and have that plugged in and uh, just partially put it down so it sits on the, and the, the Victron charger is pretty nice. Um, got some cobwebs going here already. Um, it, uh, it does a nice job. It's a, it's a smart charger so you can monitor it on your, on your phone if you really want to. Um, and then what I have there is a trip light surge protector um, just in case the barn gets hit by lightning, hopefully it never does, but if it does, then hopefully that trip light will do a nice job. These are pretty nice because they got a center hole connection. Um, you can get find them on Amazon uh, that holds it in place, and it actually gives you one more uh, outlet there for, for your outlet, your double gang or single gang outlet. But let's get back to the vehicle. Um, so... With this, that's a connection that goes to the terminals there. And then I basically come off of, of the uh, terminals and come around. And you're gonna wanna put as quick as you can to the battery, you're gonna wanna put you a resetting breaker there. So um, that's a 30 amp. The reason why I went with 30 amp is because I did not go with a 30 amp DC to DC 12 volt smart Victron charger um, and they make so many different models so you're gonna want to make sure I somehow or another I actually ordered the 24 volt initially which was was a big mistake and um, so I ended up having to send that one back and then get the right one I went with the 17 amp and the reason why you're gonna want to do that is um, or maybe not do that it depends on, on what vehicle you have is even though this Armada has a pretty nice uh, alternator on it um, and I, I knew it would probably handle the load. I don't really need 30 amps uh, going back to the trailer. Uh, it is, this is more of, because I have a, a generator that I carry with me all the time. This is more of a going down the road overnight, 
no sun, dark. The solar panels are not charging on the trailer. Um, we have, we're gonna put two more 270s, so that you're gonna see that in a future video. I got two more 90 watt uh, panels to put up there. So you'll see that in a future video. But we just have the 190 watt, and that does no good going down the road. So that's the whole purpose. Um, but you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm all over the place on this video. I'm sorry, guys. I think I'm gonna have to reshoot it actually. But ah, um, eh, you know, we'll roll with it. So, um, but yeah, 17 amps. You know, going smart. It shut down when the, the the truck's not running. You just do the auto detect. There's a lot of stuff to uh, learn about these. There's a lot of videos out there, um, you know, that you can uh, you can really get to know how these things work. Uh, I'm not going to go into it in this video. I wanted to basically show you the Airstream component of it uh, and how I did things uh, slightly different. I'm not saying better, uh, but in in some ways better as far as where I located it. And uh, yeah, so that's why I wanted to share it with you. All right, so I'm kind of doing this backwards as far as uh, how I'm filming it, but um, it'd be in order. I'm going to start at the vehicle first and then go backwards. So what I'm looking at now is basically we're at the front of the Airstream, and a lot of folks, I've seen these installation videos before, the DC to DC charger installation videos before, and uh, a lot of the people will end up let me open this compartment here for us. Um, installing it in this front compartment, okay? And I'm not knocking what, they'll usually mount it on this wall right here. There's that vent that I was talking about that actually goes in there, and actually you might be able to even see the insulation um, that I have if I turn a light on. And then uh, the vent is definitely keeping us from seeing it. But that is the vent, and um, you know, they'll put a lot of electrical components up into this compartment. My thing is, is that this is a storage compartment. And as you're going down the road, if you get some rough roads, um, you know, this stuff's going to move around in here. I wanted to maintain having this storage. Uh, so I personally, I didn't like that idea. Um, I didn't like the idea of, uh, first off, you know, compromising some of the storage space and then having wires exposed and lugs exposed and whatnot, obviously that would solve our issue as far as being able to get to it quickly if something was messed up. But um, I think with my solution um, that I talked about with the handles, that works out better. So let's look at the tongue here and let's look at what the wiring looks like. The, um, the wiring, the way I did it, and this is kind of crucial, is, uh, simply just zip tied it which that's no big deal but i did put um, the nylon cladding uh, wire loom is what they call it the the plastic wire loom to go around the two wires the ground and the positive um, i do have an anderson plug on there and uh and and put the cap on there just to keep the connections nice um, it it connects to the um to your rv seven way and I'm going to show you more about that over there um, and how it works over there. It goes underneath or around the tongue that is. And then I'm going to, for, for the benefit of you guys kind of explaining things here, I know terrible, terrible camera work on my part here, but uh, just, you know, kind of doing this one handed here with the old iPhone, kind of tired of the old GoPro just deciding to work when it wants to work. Uh, but if you look underneath there, you'll see that uh, it connects there to the, uh, uh, let me look underneath here, I'll show you. All right, so it kind of crosses over and uh, comes back this way actually on the passenger side, or driver's side that is, and, uh, and goes across and above the spare. And then let me go over there. You may want to route it a different way, so kind of showing you just you know, it's not hard to get it routed, um, but uh, you know, you're gonna wanna be smart about what you connect to and just to make sure that things don't wiggle around. This right here is actually coming from underneath and going into the battery box. That is where the leads that are the output from 
the DC to DC charger go into the battery box. So kind of make it clear here, what we have is we have power coming from the vehicle via the connection there at the back of the, the vehicle, connecting there, going up underneath, all four wires going into the underside of the Airstream and going into that underneath bunk compartment that you're gonna see here in a little bit and uh, going up in there. Now I use, I think this came out really good so I'm gonna show you. I use this gland, this bulkhead gland and uh, if, I, if I'm able to, I'll, I'll link the, uh, the Amazon or at least I'll show you a picture of what it looked like uh, that goes up in there. I had to drill a hole. I just used the basic uh, hole saw to get the right size for that gland to go up in there. That tape is residual from the good old Airstream factories methods of holding things in place. That hole there to the left that you see that is actually already existing in the compartment. That's where they run all of their uh, components into the box there to hook up to the inverter and the solar charger and, and all the wires coming from that. But that there to the right is my work with the gland, uh, a much nicer, more waterproof setup uh, than just basically a hole with some edge wire loom at acting as edge protection. Um, definitely that's the cheaper way to do it. Um, so yeah, so anyways, those four wires were a little bit difficult to get up in there. That is six gauge, two of them. Once again, non-isolated DC to DC charger, so they need to have a ground and a positive. You can't just ground it to the, to the vehicle uh, or the trailer itself and then, and then you know, loomed all the way around. So hopefully that helps you out as far as how to get it up into that compartment and uh, give you some ideas there. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about the next thing. Well. Let me show you the back of the vehicle here, just how I, this is gonna be obviously vehicle dependent as well, but this gives you an idea that I just ran it and popped it out and mounted it to the frame and everything else nicely with the cap there when it's not in use. And then it just goes right there to the seven way right above it. Um, don't All right, I'm shooting these videos a little bit out of sequence here uh, because I just happen to be inside of the Airstream and just as a reminder, this is a 23 foot FBT, which is forward bunk twin. Um, and uh, this is the passenger side of the trailer. Uh, looking forward, there's the front windows. This would be the front of the trailer, just to give you reference. So, you know, all these trailers are configured different. There's a lot of different configurations, but I, I'm just gonna say a couple things. And the reason why I'm showing you this is first off, this is at the Froley system. Uh, the, the mattress system, it's a German made mattress spring, sort of like acting like a box spring. Um, I got the mattress off over here, of course. Um, and we're really pleased with that. So I don't want to get too sidetracked, but I just thought I'd mention that in case this is the first time you're seeing it. Uh, we, it took us a little while to actually discover that this even existed. So I guess every opportunity to share something that you don't know, that's always a good thing. This is the compartment that I ended up installing the DC to DC Victron uh, charger. And uh, I'll make mention of the, the model earlier, probably in this video. So, you know, and, and the considerations for that. But also, I've installed some handles here that I can lift up on the, uh, the panel here that is normally held in with screws. And... Um, so let me, another reason why I want to mention this, I know I'm uh, just kind of getting long-winded here with this, but uh, this is normally screwed in with those screw covers. And you can see one of the screw holes right there, and then it'll have like a screw cover over top of it to keep it, um, you know, more appealing, appeasing, or whatever you want to say. And um, I, I want to say that Airstream, this is just a crazy idea in my opinion. Um, this should have been a hatch of some sort because what lives in here for the Globetrotter FBT, 23 FBT, and probably almost every other bunk, uh, Ford bunk, twin, for that matter, is the inverter. 
and the solar charger also lives in there and your your main basically DC um, terminal bus and so it's there's a little bit of stuff in there already and then on this wall and I'm not going to show you this because you know you're gonna have to wire it uh, as you feel uh, appropriate but I ended up mounting the DC to DC charger on this wall right here and screwing it into this um, frame underneath there and I know it'd be easy enough for me to pull these pull this frolly back in a hurry if I needed to and show you um, but the reason why I put the handles on there is if I ever like smelled um, something heating up electrically uh, being that you have two chargers now in there but also an inverter all of them do get warm um, I some people don't even carry a screwdriver with them. I mean, I know that's hard to believe, but if you ever had a problem with with this, there's not like there's a quick disconnect, 12 volt DC disconnect that they have underneath the um, battery compartment. If you had an electrical problem, something that one of your um, inverter, or your solar charger was getting a little bit warm and maybe potentially failing, Good luck getting in there in a hurry. So I did not put any more screws in there. I literally just uh, left all the screws out. And then it's hard to kind of pry it out of there. You normally have to, you have to use like a body panel tool, um, an interior body panel tool uh, to get into the cracks there and, prop and pry it open. So long story short, put some handles on there that fold down. Uh, especially if you have the Froley system that, you know, it's not going to interfere whatsoever. Um, that way, if you need to get in there in a hurry because you smell something that's suspicious, um, you can get in there and do some investigating uh, and get your batteries unhooked and, and possibly prevent uh, you from losing your Airstream in the process. I, I kind of really, I, you know, what good is in a fire extinguisher if you can't get to major electrical components um, to you know to get your fire extinguisher too. Um, in that front compartment there is a vent that allows air to get in from from this cubby into that compartment to kind of let it breathe a little bit as well in case you didn't know that. Um, and then uh, the other thing um, that I wanted to say uh, about that is is that um, you know yeah just yeah I guess I've really kind of, oh I know what it was uh, so also in there I do have a 30 amp um, battery uh, surge protector or a 30 amp DC surge protector that is in line with the new Victron DC to DC uh, charger so the wires come up in there and they also exit out so your input wires coming from the vehicle and then your output wires going to the battery box are located in that compartment that you know and this is a non isolated dc to dc charger so that's why they have to have positive and negative um but then there's also a 40 or correction 30 amp dc or dc breaker in there also that way if there is some type of wiring uh compromise it will trip uh, and, and protect the system a little bit as well. All right.